Hello everyone and welcome back to another Squirm Quickie and today we're doing a um, rather unique game from the PS1 library. Today we're doing Kurashi slash Intelligence Cube for the PlayStation 1 released in 1997. First let's have the um, American intro. I feel like I've heard of this game before. This was actually very prominent in some demo discs, Java. That's probably where I remember it from. So yeah, uh, Kurashi, since that's it, 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 okay, it's a yeah. bit interesting, it's, maybe, it's called IQ Intelligence Cube in Japan, Intelligence Cube in the US, and Kurashi in Europe. The, the correct pronunciation of this should be Kurushi, because, you know, Japanese, uh, you know, st style is to say crush. Which is the funniest thing, since there wasn't even the name of the game in Japan. No, no don't yeah. know what to tell you. All right, since, and since I'm playing this game through its uh, PS5 PlayStation Network release. Yeah, Sony has actually, you know, managed to, to dig this one. I know that they managed to spawn enough of a series, but I still don't know how many <laughs> titles are there in total. Oh, now I remember. This was known as the IQ series, hence yeah. why Cube is spelled with a Q. But since I'm European, um, we're going to be playing this game on the European PAL version. I don't even think oh, there's... Uh, the PAL frame rate. Well, no, I, I don't think it's a, it's a problem if there's a problem with frame rate in this one in particular. At least not that I remember. It's a puzzle game not to mention Jova these new emulations they allow you to choose which version you want PAL or NTSC yeah. anyway so if you want to play the American version you just go to the options and select that so all right, all right. I'm guessing get, you're playing we don't, this while we don't get the intro because of space reasons we do get multi five yep I presume you're playing this digitally via like uh, the yeah that's what he just said. The, the, yeah. the digital yeah. copy that uh, got released recently on PS4 and PS5 basically for the sake of you know having the multi five option for our Europeans Jova they include the PAL version as well except for the American I get one. why this is a quickie if I recall correctly there's not really a narrative for this game mm -hmm. not really. If I fall correctly, the closest you get is uh, you're a guy that is trapped in this maze and they to you know destroy the cubes or you know to advance. And um, portal. Uh, and as you portal came after this. And as you and as you're listening, um, audience, um, for a puzzle game that released around this time, this has a rather eerie soundtrack to put it lightly. Um, oh yes. Uh, uh, yes, this game has a rather this game has a unique soundtrack for puzzle games. It was composed by by Takayori Hattori. And yes, it's full orchestra so... on the PS1 game. Basic rules. The concept of the game is to try to capture the cubes. Simple enough, right? Yep. yep. The By the way, there's a there's a bot in um, AstroBot yeah, that reference as a reference, that, that. As a reference to this. By yeah. pressing the X button again, the player can deactivate the mark. The game is played by marking a spot and then successfully deactivating the spot. Now let's try to capture a cube. First mark the spot where a cube should be captured. The game was developed the by, a, uh, by the a professor spot, called the Masahiko button. Sato who was, the who was working at the Tokyo University the of the captured. Arts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Japanese developers usually like to get uh, professors to develop their puzzle games. I mean, it feels pretty logical. Mm -hmm. It's similar to what Nintendo did with Dr. Kawashima's Rain Train. Yep. The number of fallen cubes will be calculated on the block scale. Every so yeah, time don't let more than three cubes, cubes fall off, of otherwise scale. this will happen. The player loses the last row of the stage. Yeah, and needless to say, if you're still on there, by the time those cubes fall off, the player must prevent the cubes from off. falling off the stage. So the typical strategy is rush these as soon as you can, so that you can, you know, get them asap. But yeah, again, again the, the biggest two rules: do not add more than free fall, but don't get uh, crushed, the as in uh, you know, crushed, because, because you know, as you can see, the the cubes. Are... Game over. Yeah, basically. Yeah, again, the reason why I did not play much aside from the devil is because as a kid, this scared the shit out of me. And I, I, I mean, how falling can I... into nothingness? No, not just that. It, it's it, the atmosphere is this black void where you're in this. Uh, there was no real music in it, uh, and you know, if you fail, you get like a panning shot of your character getting, you know, smooshed by the cubes. Uh, 
as the camera pans away. Like, I mean, I get it, it was unintentional, but it genuinely did scare me when I was a child. So I never yeah. bothered it until way later. So now this is the trader snake. Forbidden Speaking of cube. boxes, these are the ones that you have to avoid. The black the ones. The yeah. Um. Ever since, uh, like, uh, ever since Astrobot uh, released, I noticed uh, that the. Um, Sony has been prioritizing games that were referenced in that game when it comes to the um, like Mr. Mosquito. Yeah, yeah like Mr. Mosquito. You can, I can I can tell that uh, when it comes to when it came to Astrobot, the the guys who handled the back the the these classic releases probably thought, you know what? Let's prioritize the games that get referenced in here. There's the also the fact that uh, you know when it came to the backward compatibility. There we go. Hidden uh, cubes pass by. Yeah. Fall off the stage. The um, they still prioritized overall, you know, tight uh, first party titles or at best a secondary instead of you know uh, for one. They they have popped button. up occasionally, like the month we're recording this. Uh, we got the Dino Crisis, and uh, you know, as mentioned, in state of play, we're gonna get also Blood Omen eventually, for example. You know, but for the most part, they have been Sony Power stuff. Uh. Mm -hmm. And now for the cubes, you should try and get, but still be careful with. Advantage cube. Thank you, sir. The player can the use green the ones cubes or the advantage cubes to efficiently capture the cubes. This is an advantage cube. Now who is the toxic cube? <laughs> when the player captures an advantage cube, the spot will be marked. What about the gelatinous cube? Oops. By the pressing cube the a jelly. Button, the it's a typical D and D enemy. Yep. The but remember, uh, the, remember the gelatinous cube from Onward Webs? That was meant to be a direct reference to the ND. By using an advantage cube. Mark and capture an advantage cube. Then capture the surrounding cubes by pressing the triangle button. Yep. Yeah, I was I was considering uh, using the uh, showing off the different languages in this version since uh, but at the same since time, this, since Karashi includes them all, no well that would take too long. Yeah, it's fine like this. So I don't remember how the Italian dub sounds like, but I'm pretty sure it was fine. So basically, black blocks are your enemy. Green blocks are your best friend in this. In this. Well, game. It, it depends. Again, like he said earlier, don't. Um, be careful that the radius doesn't include black cubes. Again, it's it's, it's a puzzle game similar to you know stuff like Catherine, you know. So let's give it a look. Try. Mm -hmm. Oh hey, this music doesn't sound too bad. It sounds also nice and happy. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. It's like a precursor to the Smash announcer voice. There you go. You can train up a different advantage cubes. Uh. Yeah, this game only came out. This game came out in 1997, like I said earlier. And so, um, I don't. I don't even remember uh, if the PS1 had games with an orchestral soundtrack before. Ooh, um, I don't remember. I could have sworn there were hmm. if the granted in a lot of cases it could be that they made it orchestral at first but then had to like um they had to uh uh compress it for the console it doesn't sound like they had to do that a whole okay like, because i can imagine this game didn't exactly take up a whole lot of space on the disc so they could afford more room Although it's funny because most people's experiences playing this game were on the demo versions mm -hmm. that had that had no music. I like guess not... this is this is why it made it more ominous, ominous to me. You know, it was just this pitch black void with this ominous sounding of his pumping. You know, and uh, you know this feels aggressively moving towards you. It does feel like this is a game made more as like a tech demo of the PlayStation as opposed to being its own full game. I mean, obviously it did get its own games, but I get why people remember it more for the demo disc stuff. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, this game came out three years after the PS PS One came out in Japan. I know that uh, Sony. Okay, don't remember because I didn't play that much. But I know that Sony had sort of a similar series on the PSP called Echo Chrome, but I've yet to catch up on those. Go. So far, I think it's all going swimmingly. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Mr. Perfect is telling me so. As we all know, level one is always the best representation of the entire game. Ah, oh, what? Well, I've gotten them all at that point. Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay, I don't know if this game had a different, um... I don't know if this game had a different um, guy saying perfect or whatever it was in Japan, but uh... <laughs> okay, I, I can't find. I, I don't remember the last time I've looked for the Japanese version of this game online, anyway. So, um, what else do you guys want to ask about this game? I mean, uh, the game, right, I mean, so... as the big puzzle enthusiast here, like, no, this is a, this is a uh, game that is very good, actually. Like, like I said, it's it's basic for what it is, but again, like, um, it gets the job done with some good, uh, well thought out puzzles. Yeah, I mean, I don't mean this is a negative way, but the presentation of the game is doing doing most of the legwork here. It's like we said, it's a pretty simple one, uh, but it's, and it's carried a lot by the. Um, what unconventional choice of music we have for a puzzle mm -hmm. game. Uh, you mentioned there being a series. I want... Again, I'm most familiar with the demo stuff. Did the series ever actually grow to have its own narrative? Not that I know. No, again, it's, it's similar to... Um, Sony did, like you said, did have a couple of puzzle games similar to this, like Echo Chrome, and they mostly were there just for, you know, <laughs> the... Um, the challenge factor. Um, the closest you can get to an equivalent of that would be well, Loco Roco, but uh, you know, good luck trying to understand what's going on there. Maybe Ash maybe Ashino uh, looked at this game and it was one of the biggest impressions for Catherine. Well, I yeah. do wonder if the inspiration for that was more Qbert, uh, just in a reverse situation. Well, true, but like the overall atmosphere of this game, I can see it being an influence. And we are clear! And again, yeah, the more perfect you do, the better the bonus is. Again, you can tell this is an early PS1 game because it's still caring about them points. Huh? I'm not too surprised that the game goes for something of a deep, dark, and mysterious aesthetic. This is something we saw with the PlayStation as early as stuff like Crash Bandicoot 1, which was a very atmospheric platformer. Even in the tech demos, I mentioned how the T-Rex was kind of a nightmare fuel to me. And hey, Astro's Playroom brought that T-Rex back in full force. Traumatize us all once again. Yeah, stage two. Um, I'll be honest, um, I've played this game a few times. Um, I can never get past this bit. Really? Yeah, stage two. I, okay. I said, okay. I'm not very... In case, um, I'm not sure if I've already told you, Jim, but I'm not very good at puzzle games. Yep. That's why, uh, when that it comes to... Mentioned... There we go. Crushed. Well, hey, he's just fine, Tio. Just fine. Swimmingly. That's why uh, I've given Dubs a walkthrough that he can consult for when he records uh, Layton's Mystery Journey. Honestly, yeah. I would have sooner seen him do like Ace Attorney than uh, Layton, but hey! Yeah, <laughs> In fact, now that I think about it. When did you well, do this um, journey? When this Apollo Justice. I thought that was Pedro who did that part. No, that no, was me. Remember, Joel, yeah. we, got, we also got a, a moment where we were, we forgot to delete a notification from his cell phone. That's right! God, it's been such a while since we recorded that, I forgot. At the very yeah. least, the, the game, you know, can be played somewhere else, at the very least. Uh, oh, yes. One where you no longer have to worry about smartphone notifications. Perfect. Okay. And, uh, okay, we, I think we missed the explanation earlier, but in mean, the top right is the target number of moves you get to finish this part of the puzzle. I mean, you don't fail the puzzle if you miss, but it's a target where um, 
That's uh, okay. If you fall off the stage and fail, um, you you also get um, a little IQ score because of, based on how well you solve the puzzle as well as mm -hmm. solving it. Again, this place. is the, this is the same logic of Doctor Kawashi, Dr. Kawashima's brain training. You know, but he still there is an actual brain, a literal brain teaser. And yeah, I think I missed a couple. There's a couple there. Oh shit. Yeah, so yeah, another problem I have, sometimes I keep I hold down the square button for too long by mistake, which causes all these <laughs> blocks to fall down. It's like it's like Tetris, but it's more painful. There we go. Down you go. Oh no wow, more the effect. Music's getting more intense. Oh yeah, um, we don't hear it in this playthrough, but there is. But this game does have pinch music if you're getting close to failure. I'm wondering if that's why the music got more intense there. But no, this is just a regular level music. Remember, Jova, when you know when I played this on the demo, BBC was on the demo. The demo disc did not have music to begin with, so it wasn't even that. Yeah, I think my experience also extends to the demo disc. That's why I don't recall music as much because, like you mentioned, there weren't any music really to be had on the demo. Yeah. Um, oh boy. Waves up. up. Shit. <laughs> He'll be fine. Or maybe not. Well, at least you won't hit the ground. Ninety-five, eighty, hundred. Oh, I asked, what's my IQ? 55? Sorry, Dweebs. Sorry to be blunt, Dweebs, but you kind of stink at this game. <laughs> Damn, I, I don't know what's worse. Falling, um, you never end the, um, falling forever and ever and ever, or getting an IQ of 55 while falling down in for eternity. He fell over, he fell over. Yeah. Alright, so um, I'm going to quickly demonstrate the two-player this game it only uses one controller and each player takes it in turns to solve the puzzle ah the old mario methodology yep and the game made it well actually that's the thing jova um in theory the multiplayer of super mario brothers would work with just one player one uh, one controller but the game yes. still forces you to have two controllers to even be able to do that that's the thing that's the weird part Ah, okay, right. also, also, for some reason, when every, whenever you first cut to player two in the multiplayer mode, the music just stops and never, and never comes back until you um, all fall off the stage. That's I guess just in case you were feeling nostalgic for the demo disc version. Either that or it's the programmer's oversight. Whoops. But yeah, you only get an IQ point if you manage to solve the puzzle. Again, so there you are, folks. If you, there you are, folks. I don't even have to um, include the demo as a bonus in this place. Just do this. And, yeah, in a way, um, I agree with some people. That kind of makes this game more eerie. With no, um, no audio. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, get, I get no IQ there. Also, this game doesn't call IQ Intelligence Cube in the in Europe, so you've got a K for Karasi. Hmm. I don't know what to tell you, Dave. So. Hmm. Well, like you said, uh, you know, finding uh, also the um, how many games it did spawn, you know, it's a uh, it's a bit of a challenge in itself because you know Wikipedia is not a super, you know adjusted uh, with all the ones that we got uh, um there was iq final which i think also was re-released um also iq remix uh, for the ps2 there was iq mania for the psp uh and i think something else but 
And also, I think a sub series which is called the PQ also, Practical we got a, Intelligent Quotient. Look at the play. We're gonna play a new game. Outrun the falling blocks. Ow. It looks like you may have lost. Jesus. Well, well, at least he's not. At least he's not stuck just capturing cubes for all eternity. As a little special treat, we're going to be doing uh, the sequel to this game also in this video. Oh, I feel Kurashi final. Kurashi final. Oh wow, the second game is the final game. Oh, it that... was, and like you said, there was a PSP version like Cube Mania, but it mentions here on Wikipedia that it contains puzzles from all three previously released games. Uh, so and like, it was I... only in Japan, apparently. Like I joke, but literally naming the second game in your series final kind also, of this, this map is weird. Um it crushes all the countries it squishes all the countries together and Australia apparently has vanished. Oops. Sir. Unless that's uh, unless that's Australia that's crashed into the eastern part of Asia there. I don't know. Well, in any case, uh, we've got a couple of new modes to demonstrate. So first, we're going to be doing 100 Attack. Or as the game so eloquently puts it. Thank you. Cool. That's but yeah, like, so like, okay, you know, <laughs> PSP installment or not, did they go in with the intent that right. this would be um, the 100 last? 100 Attack, uh, basically 100 mini puzzles to solve. And he got I'm a certain amount of moves to do them in. I'm guessing the system is pretty much identical as it was to the previous game in the sequel. Pretty much, well, except with different music. Shit. Yeah. But yeah, no, well, like I was asking, um... So, did they absolutely intend for this to be the last one, given how you know, they know. named it Final and everything? It might have been because Justice sounded cool, Drova. There's that, too. Try again! Try again! <laughs> okay, the actor's a bit more nonchalant in this yeah, one. Um, okay, okay, one thing I should mention, unlike um, the previous game, aside from Japan, this game only got a release in Europe. Oh, not even an American release. That's weird. This is why the re-release is called... Is British in this one. And the re-release, uh, even on the PlayStation Network, Jova uses the European title, Kurushi Final Mental Block, so... Yeah, that figure is still... So, yeah, was the, it, the demo was is, the is showing you how you were supposed to do it. So I'm curious, was the game not particularly successful in the West? It might, well, more in a, a, a showcase with stuff like uh, Layton, the, well, okay, for Layton it had advantage of the story, but, you know, when it comes to the actual puzzle component, uh, Europe is more, e is more, you know, good at eating this, uh, and Australia to, to an extent, uh, at eating these puzzle games uh, than America. This is why, again, Dr. Kawashima's brain training was kept like that, instead of just being called simple brain yep. training next up we've got um kurashi survival hmm. um let me check about uh, the development company for this uh, uh this was done oh, kurashi, by sorry thank you Mr. g artist uh, which eventually became a company simply called epics uh, um which i think is still active to these days to this day uh, which did help with uh, other studios like uh, the ones that did Para for the Rap, I think it was called, that one was called uh, Nanan Nanan Sha. Um, they did uh, help for Ghost in the Shell standalone complex. Uh, Digimon World Championship. Uh, and more recently, one of the popular Kura games. Alright, so in this mode, um, it's pretty much Try and solve as many of these as you can. The more perfects you get, the bigger your score at the end. And you also, it also times you. Yeah. Great! Yeah, Tony the Tiger cleared us. I could have run a Frosty's advert. Okay, the perfect actually sounded like it did in the first game. No, it's different. It's, 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 it's a British accent this time. I love how one of the trophies for getting a perfect in one of the stages of the first game literally tells you, isn't this music a bit too epic for this game? 
Well, it helps us stand out. Hmm. You'd think you were off to save uh, the fair royal hostage from the Dragon's Tower with music. This, like this, this. does have a bit of a Studio Ghibli vibe in terms of score, yes. Yeah, so. Oh. I legit maybe, do wonder maybe we if they well, would... how saving the world from destruction, who knows? But... I wonder if they I... legit had something like a narrative plan for this series at some point. I agree with a fan theory in that maybe this is just some guy who's a, who's asleep and he's dreaming all of this. I mean, sure, it's not the first coma dream theory that I've ever seen online. <laughs> but Tio. Everything past disc one is squall in a dream. <laughs> dreams. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm at the dreams. Why? I'm at the very least grateful that Kitaze, uh, yeah, too fucking late, but at the very least finally disproved that shit. Just so. I will say one theory I would have liked to have seen true was actually the Renoa being Ultimisia theory because that one could last for Renoa. Wow. Okay, that scream feels a bit more gnarmy in this one. Well, if you want to draw, there is a thing called Death of the Author. If you want to apply that, uh, it's your choice. So. To well, me, what's your sorry. personal take regarding the Renault and Ultimisia theory? I mean, oh, sorry, I thought you were asking me. Go on. I mean, I'm oh, you too, I guess. Well, go on, Pedro. I can mention later. That's the thing, Jova. Like to me, uh, to to me, whatever theory i can get i can guess is not really where i want the story to go like my preferred route for the story to go would be for squall to find to you know put his sit his foot right, down so, um, go on. how do you feel about the rules being told to you again but this time with a british accent yes by jeremy clarkson sure believe so um <laughs> go on Pedro. <laughs> um to try to capture the cubes uh again uh, uh like i've said like my my preferred way for the story to go would be for squall to uh, you know get uh, get muster up his courage and stand his foot and say to renoa you know what renoa no i can um, do better i can do better than you i don't have to put up with your emotional abuse Fuck I off. get what you're saying, Pedro, but Drova asked about, you know, fan theories that are based on know. the interpretation I, of the story as it is. I know, that's what, I, that that's, that's what I said. Yes. That's why I said none of the theories I can come up with would be a satisfactory one for me. <laughs> well, my main point was just what do you feel about those particular fan theories? Like, now, I know that you and Tio both agree that the whole squalls in a dream theory was dumb. I was asking more so about the one that I feel makes more sense, the Reno and Ultimisia are the same people theory. Okay, here, here's what my reaction would be if that were the plot twist that Renault is actually Ultimisia. Uh, my reaction would be does that mean we get, we get to kill Renoa? I get the idea. Yeah, you get your happy ending in that it's regard. More, it's more of a case of, you know, self fulfilling prophecy, you know, but it would have the connotation of the villain, you know, winning no matter what, which is kind of a depressing thought. And, uh, I tend to, you know, prefer to have my Final Fantasy have some degree of a, of a good ending. So. Wouldn't it technically be the villain loses no matter what since Ultimisia yes, well, dies? Yes, uh, but, uh, you know, prevent the, the, you know, we cannot prevent her to rise in the first place, so, you know. Mm -hmm. it's an, she's an inevitability. While the game as it's presented, it gives the idea that maybe because she was killed during the time of compression spell with a K, you know, that means that uh, she will technically never existed and, you know, Elyon uh, and Rino can never be possessed again. I think the... I feel like that. Could, I feel like you could still do that, even if Reno and Ultimisia are the same. Like have Ultimisia basically be a bad version of how Reno it could turn out, but you know by stopping her plans, we prevent that from. Well, no, that's the thing. Know. The fan theory specifically subscribes to the idea that uh, Reno became Alt Ultimisia because of her grief of seeing everyone else around her die, you know, and the seeds of becoming, you know, these still violent against the witches. Essentially, her becoming <laughs> becoming the thing every, you know she will hate um anyway dreams can you tell us instead since you bother to 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 showcase to us who this british narrator is i've looked around um i don't really know imdb doesn't credit him so they got the janitor let me get oh he sounds fine enough for being just an extra let me see 
Although, again, as I mentioned, having the cast of Top Gear slash the Grand uh, Tour actually having to narrate this would be interesting. Uh. Mm -hmm. Hamold, you solid tic tac! You got crushed again! <laughs> uh, no, RNDV doesn't have. Uh, doesn't seem to have um, an actor section. Let me see, maybe it's hidden behind cast and crew. Nope. Um, okay. So apparently, um, according to some wiki that I found, um, gone. Apparently, the narrator is Peter Barakan. Cannot Bar say I've heard that name before. All the cubes in the marked area will. Peter Barakan. Whilst the narrator in um, in the um, in, in the original game, in the English version, is Mark Paul A. Costanzo. So did they like just get the same actor from the original version of the European release? I mean, sorry, from the first European release. With the advantage um, cube, so. the player should be able to officially. Oh, so they got two British actors, I guess, one for the first and a different for the second. The first one is an American. The first one is an American. Not in the marked area. This one needs oh, a British so. guy because again, this game didn't come out in America. Oh, so Kuroshi, the first one, pretty much just had the one the for the English on job. But you know what? Honestly makes sense. Like, it wasn't cube. like they were reading the whole swaths of dialogue, so I can get moves. why for Perfect America and Britain they probably would have just kept the English dub the same. All right, today it is, uh, uh... I don't, I don't think that's him, but Wikipedia tells me that Peter Barkan, born 1951, is an English DJ, freelance broadcaster, and author of books of music. Like, it wouldn't surprise me too much, because again, this is still um, a game that was done in the early years of the PS1, you know, and they did have some bizarre, you know, casting uh, for it, for something just the narrator, it would kind of make sense, but... Uh, I don't know if it, it feels like one of those cases of coincidence with the names. So. Possible. Let me see. Well, let's see. Paul A. Costanzo doesn't really seem to be credited uh, in general. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the, the perfect isn't quite the same. As the original, but I do love the great in this one. It's like the guy, the guy, the guy who voices that bit. The last thing he watched beforehand was a Kellogg's advert, <laughs> and he just said, "Okay, do that." But um, but one thing, I'm, but I've never found a reason why Sony Europe decided to give this game the more Japanese name in spite of Japan never calling Market, the game Kurushi. Marketability, Dweebs. Uh, like he said, Dweebs, it, it can potentially work just like that. Uh. That and um, from, what I can from what I've understood, Europeans are more... Um, um, I wouldn't say weeaboos exactly, but they're, but they're more... They're more um, accepting of Japanese names than North America was at the time. Yeah. Like I said, it's either France or my country, usually the biggest two. Mm -hmm. We go to the point where, you know, recently it was a French, a French, completely French made studio is now making a proper turn based RPG that is similar to what we've been commenting recently about Lost Odyssey. In case you're wondering, yes, this game shares the same composer as the last one. Mm hmm. Again, like, that's the thing. Out of all these things, the thing that feels the most fleshed out, aside from the gameplay itself, is the music. Mm-hmm. And it's like, as far as we know, there's no grand sweeping narrative. It's literally just a guy doing his job with the trash. Another power for the heap. Right. Like, could you imagine? You just go to sleep uh, one day, and then you never wake up because you're probably going to the spot. That would suck. Yeah. Be a bit of a bummer. Mm-hmm. They even got a choir and everything, like, jeez. Like I said, it, it sounds very similar to the Studio Ghibli soundtrack. Mm-hmm. 
Of all, again, this type of Think about it. also used uh, not too long after this for the mid for the first medieval game, Java. Think, of that too. think about it. The animated movie adaptation of Intelligence Q by Studio Ghibli, directed by Haru Miyazaki, scored by Joe Izaishi. I mean, I you guess I could, I, I could see, you know, them do, being the ones uh, that could try to make a proper story out of this. So. I was about to ask, like... Do you see them expanding this into a fully fleshed narrative? I guess, I guess Although, the, the game itself works, you know, just for that, you know. Sure, on one hand you can say, well, there's not much to work with, but on the other hand, its simplicity makes it more adaptable to any kind of story. Although if Ghibli were to make a movie about this, I think Takahata would be a better pick for a director than Miyazaki, because I feel because Takahata is the more artist, is the more artsy of the two. Again, maybe this is a coma victim's, you know, dream. I know, a bit, you know, uh, copy pasta, you know, cheesiness, but, you know, we probably will work out for the better in this, you know. Um, maybe this is the struggle of someone, you know, going on with a bad period in life. After all, the final boss in the first Half-Life was created because one of the developers uh, at Valve was about to become a father and that, you know, some thoughts about, you know, fears about, you know, um, Overhood, so he created the final boss based on that. So. You know, I wonder if the blocks could be either a representation of him getting back his memory as they fall into place, or him losing brain cells as he's slowly dying. Yeah, maybe passing there's away also from a terminal disease. Maybe it's also something like that. You know, like uh, defeat. Maybe it's a, a reverse situation, Jova. Maybe this is a fight against cancer, a bit like Jimmy the pulsating mass. Uh, or hey, maybe it's like Eternal Sonata, where you actually need to die for the sake of everything. Like, again, this basically serves that, you know, even jokes aside, there is potential indeed to get something out of this and still be respectful to the source material. Which it's just that more... I, I get the idea when it comes to adaptation from Sony games, this is very on the very low priority. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, cancel our God of War series, cancel Uncharted 2, we're making the goddamn Intelligence Q movie, and it will be peak cinema. <laughs> I mean, gotta... I joke, but Tetris with got Eli Roth, uh, With Eli Roth playing the main guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, from what I've seen of his acting compared to his directing, um, you might actually be somewhat good at that. Like, I joke, but... Oh, Tetris sorry, I got, I, got, I, got, I got confused with people, my bad. I want to, I, I meant, uh, uh, God, I forgot the name. The guy who played uh, the um, the last major FIFA president in, uh, you know, uh, United Passions. Oops. That's some interesting game over music. Feels like something out of James Bond. And that, yeah, is so, that... How that, much that, of an IQ you have, Dweebs, so. Um, let's see. QB faces Ooh, 36. Even worse, Jesus Christ, babes. <laughs> See me after game, class. Uh, like... maybe, this game, maybe this game judges IQ a bit harsher than the previous one. Sure. Uh, that's the kind of IQ that gets you sent straight to primary school. Uh... All right, then, uh, well, now that I uh, consider uh, where my life went wrong, um, that was both games in the Kurashi Cube series. Um, I'll go first real quick. Um, okay, yeah, it's an interesting little series, this. Um, in terms of music, I do prefer the music from the first game the more, but the music in the in the final is also pretty good. Um the graphics are obviously pretty simplistic, but they get the job done enough, okay? The gameplay, I suck at it. No two ways about it. I mean, I'm not very good at puzzle games anyway, but this is basically Tetris, but more extreme. With blocks, but this time they can fall on you and kill you. Mm -hmm. Or they really squish you. Um, and really, that's, that's, that's really about it. Um... Although, although, yeah, the multiplayer in the first game was a bit lacking. It was just take it in turns to do the puzzles. And I haven't played the multiplayer in um, Final, so I can't really judge it that much. But, um, yeah, ultimately, I, I, think, I think it's all right. And um, 
And I'm glad that more people get to play it now that it's on the um, PlayStation Network tier. Mm-hmm. Well, I say tier, I mean, like, I think like the extra tier at least. You can buy it separately. You don't have to. Yeah, but you can yeah. buy it separately as well if you don't want to bother with that. So, um, yeah, who's next? Uh, Jola. Yeah, I'll go next. This seems like a perfectly good and serviceable game that would be a good component in uh, Sony's repertoire, essentially. There is, like, pretty much almost no plot to be found. Well, what am I saying? Pretty much any plot we thought of, we thought of, essentially. That being said, it works definitely for being a demo showcase of the PlayStation's capabilities. Like, holy heck, that soundtrack goes places. The visuals are good and decent, and it provides a nice and unique puzzle gameplay format, essentially. So, overall, it's a puzzle game that does its job well. Same pretty much for the sequel, essentially. Just more British in the dub. (laughs) Which, let's be honest, it's just one voice anyway. That said, I could have seen this series getting represented in some of the crossovers like PlayStation Battlestar Royale. Mind you, mind you, I can absolutely get... Recently, he's got about uh, seeing Astro Ball, so there is that. I mean, mind you, I can get why they wouldn't prioritize this, like Tio joked about. Yeah, like, there could be an argument made for the series' representation, but I do get why it's way lower on the totem pole. I mean, stage only, it can work out. Again, never discount the possibility of representing, um, you know, a property even in minor format. Uh, You know, anything can go. I was talking about representation in general across the company in that regard, since as far as I know, aside from these two games, the only other game it got was that PSP one, which was Japan. And again, only. more recently, Astrobot stuff. But uh, again, my point is that uh, you can work something out with this, just in minimal case, instead of having an actual character from it. Uh, oh, I could even see an actual character, probably with the block gimmick working with it. But again, like, you know, I get why they wouldn't have prioritized that. But yeah, that is a good point, though. This really could have made for a stage, especially since, you know, PlayStation Battlestar Royale did have. Polygon man, so like you know, if anything, they were definitely not above going for the deep nostalgia stakes. But I digress. Intelligence Cube is a series that does its job as a puzzle game, no more, no less. Hey, Rob. Yeah, it works really well, actually. Like, um, the concept is simple but works well enough for what it is the atmosphere is quite interesting and the music is <laughs> quite so is quite the interesting choice um but yeah it, it also a very unique uh type of puzzle game i can understand that this was meant to be a very experimental thing um yeah um there's not much more to say like it's just an overall really solid game for what it is all right, I'll conclude. Um, no, these are very enjoyable. I probably should give it an, another try since they're now available, you know, on my own. From what I check, also, the trophy list seems to be very straightforward as well. So, you know, also having a good time on that. But no, you, again, uh, perfectly serviceable on their own. And you can tell that, you know, the biggest of the budget went on mostly with the soundtrack because, you know, when it came, when it came to, you know, constructing polygons, obviously this was... Uh, um, more of an attempt than anything, you know, test the capabilities of a PS1, you know. Um, not necessarily a tech demo, because, you know, they had something like Netia Rose for that. Um, but, uh, you know, something similar to that. Uh, it's still basically back when, you know, Sony was trying to be a bit more experimental, you know, in um, having different IPs. A bit similar with stuff like Vip Ribbon is another example for that. Um, uh, I wouldn't mind a revival of sorts. Again, small, make, make it small budget. A bit similar to how um, Blue Point uh, did a space shooter on the PS3 as a digital download. You know, so that is not super big in scope, but nice enough to give you know um, that showcase also that you still care about the property. Obviously, I get it. Yeah, but people that worked around these are busy doing something else if they're not retired completely. But you know, I can imagine someone else can take over. So who knows? Maybe eventually. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, if someone makes that movie adaptation, me and Jova are having dibs on, you know, these story ideas, so yeah. pay us. Um, quick, copyright it quickly. 
All right, uh, that's it. Uh, All me. right, so um, we'll see you for another squirrel cookie at some point in the future. See ya. Yeah. Right. That's uh.